tera mā, nō mai, haere mai. Piki mai, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa, kia ora hui hui mai, tātou katoa. Um, I'm Mary Ann Sherrington. I'm so glad to be here. Um, I'm assuming you can see my screen. Great. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about digital lean. I'm um, studying, getting a PhD in, in all those scary <laughs> technologies and uh, deep learning and uh, high, high dimensional data, but I'm also teaching in applied management and I'm quite passionate about applied management students talking to IT uh, experts. So I really want to connect those two ideas together with just a few slides. I want to talk about digital lean and think about it from a decision support uh, for sustainable development. So I'm quite passionate about data as an, uh, an asset and a valuable, powerful decision making tool. I think it's like the um, extra seat in the boardroom. It's really giving us some insights that we might not um, see uh, when we're just in, uh, in embedded in our everyday um, environments, looking at the things that we have to look at every day. So I just wanted to introduce Industry 4.0. Uh, it's really about a number of things like interconnection. Um, so if you think of the Internet of Things, connecting things uh, with each other, or the Internet of People, connecting people together. We all know how uh, incredible that can be. But now we're using sensors in um, all kinds of things. And I'm going to give the example of toasters. Um, why do you need your toasters to be connected? Why do you really need to know what your toaster is thinking? It's some very powerful insights from a simple thing like toasters. But I also want to talk about information transparency. Uh, thinking about um, all the information and data that we have access to uh, these days, and how can we make some good decisions from big, ubiquitous data? How can we increase functionality with our data? And technical assistance. We've got all kinds of technological systems to assist humans in their day-to-day -day tasks and decision-making. Um, Problem-solving is a huge area uh, or with unsafe tasks or complex tasks. I'm talking with my students a lot about this environment that we're in, this VUCA environment, full of volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. When I was their age, life was slower. It's just so hard to predict what you're going to be doing next week or next month, let alone in 2022. So with um, digital lean, we're able to make more decentralized decisions. There's an ability with intelligent systems to make decisions automatically, which is a little bit scary, um, but also to perform unaided tasks. Um, and I, I'm really reflecting on, on, on all these changes and where is this technology taking us? Um, and I, I saw this quote yesterday. It says just about every successful deplo deployment of AI has either one of two expedients. It has a person somewhere in the loop. So we're not all going to be taken over by robots. We still need people. Um, or the cost of failure should the system blunder is very low. So if I make a mistake with my toaster, well, it's not, it's not the end of the world. But there's a lot of interesting things that we need to think about at the moment, and we need to think about what our value is going forward. Where do we add value with all these digital lean um, technologies really reshaping the way we work? I'm also investing, uh, investigating sustainability um, in quite a big way, and I think it's an opportunity. I think it's a little bit scary. I think it's going to be costly in, in many ways, but it's also an underutilized tool um, in management, in our models and systems. We need new mindsets about sustainability and how we're doing business. Sometimes I think, do we have to really buy that thing? Why are we making more products? 
And if we are making products, why don't we make them smarter? Or can we um, think more? Can we offer more services? Can we really add value to the products that we're creating other than just creating more stuff? So Industry 4.0 offers economic sustainability functions, yes, but also socio-environmental sustainability functions. And I was listening to uh, some of the presentations earlier this afternoon, talking about how um, some countries can sidestep maybe wealthier countries. And, and one of the ways is through mobile technologies. They're ubiquitous across uh, business. They have huge sustainability impacts and uh, it's a way to sidestep um, holes or deficiencies um, in, in, in our uh, infrastructure, for example, which can be very costly. But there are other new technologies, nanotechnologies, simulations, remote sensing that impact sustainability in very specific industries. So there's a lot of exciting things when we link management and um, technologies. But what I'm finding is we need, really need to get excited about sustainability and all these technologies and firms must really summon the will to adapt and innovate uh, to create new digital products and services to increase efficiency. And, and that schema is self-serving. We're starting to look for not just the cheapest thing or not even the most valuable thing, but the thing that's um, really going to last and um, make a difference in our life in a sustainable way. So I love this quote. It says, I see the ability to leverage excess capacity as completely disruptive. If you look around, what kind of excess capacity do we have? What's, well, I'm not on campus this term, and I wasn't on campus last term. So it, I wonder, what's happening to my campus? Is it just sitting there? When, why do we want to go back on campus? And when we do, why? What value is there in being together in person when we can obviously connect online? So we need to stop thinking in, in different ways, have just different mindsets around sustainability. And we've mentioned ESG, environmental social governance scores and our return on assets. But we also need to think of the Internet of Things and the Internet of People and the deployment of those assets and the value and the talents that we are creating in our tertiary organizations. We've already got these technologies um, at work um, in sales and marketing and customer experience. I'm working with a firm at the moment who's um, bringing those data streams together in really new and exciting ways. And digital asset management is looking for hidden value in noisy, confusing, high dimensional data. Um, when I was studying, you'd look at a few variables and pick the most important one, but now we've literally got hundreds of thousands of variables and we need to choose what's going to predict what's most valuable in the future. It's really exciting stuff. And I wonder what I'll be doing soon. We've got um, this technology from New Zealand, from Auckland. Uh, we've got artificial humans with uh, deep learning um, ANs working their brains. They're taking data in real time. We're giving them our data. We're helping them to learn as they go. They're creating algorithms that can think faster and better than we can. So what value are we adding? Well, I go back to that quote. There's always a human in the system. There's always that different perspective that humans have. Maybe that empathetic element that human have, have, even in our social media, even in our connections online, there are profound changes coming our way, ethical questions, the nature of work is changing, and we need to be debating 
those changes. So a few things, human capital asset management. I'm teaching um, advanced HR management at the moment, but also um, in manufacturing, in, in um, um, cyber security, in inventory and supply chain management. We're having so many issues with supply chains and costs are rising in those areas. Digital lean can create sustainable solutions. Why do we want our toaster to know what, our do, what we're doing? Because we don't want to flip the same uh, toaster all over the world. We want to start delivering products where they're needed, in the way that they're needed, instead of creating emissions by creating cheap, ubiquitous products that go in our landfill. So digital lean creates decision support for sustainable management, but our managers have to talk to our IT experts and we have to start constructing things in ways that are going to make sense, that are going to meet our 2030 goals and our emissions targets. So digital lean can support visionary and sustainable asset uh, management, but it's up to you to start finding those hidden insights, to start debating how we can create real value and sustainable uh, products and services going forward. It's not going to be the same. And I can't even imagine what it will be, but that's the value in having tech talks and having people all around the world with different perspectives um, to look at sustainability and the endless opportunities that lay ahead. So thank you very much uh, for this opportunity and, and thank you for being part of this wonderful tech talk today.